Welcome to our first video from section 3 of chapter 10. So this is video A. Addressing simple moment frames for low-rise to mid-rise buildings. This is kind of a bread and butter system for buildings of this type. Um, by simple we mean not tapered members. So they would be rolled eye flanges for example or some other elements, structural elements, of a consistent depth and cross-section. Um, <clears throat> the advantage to doing a moment frame over a triangulated frame, as we mentioned uh, in a previous lecture, is that the, the web members of the triangulated elements tend to limit uh, architectural flexibility in terms of where people can move and where doorways can be put. Whereas a moment frame provides a very high level of architectural flexibility in terms of movement through the bracing planes. The cost of moment connections tends to be higher than the connections involved in triangulated systems, which are pin joint connections. On the other hand, as we mentioned in a previous le lecture, the benefits of the highly distributed rigid frame system in reducing the size and cost of foundations can be significant. So in a previous lecture we talked about uh, triangulated frames, which are sometimes called braced frames by the way, which is a terminology that I am not fond of, but it's uh, highly prevalent. And what that means is there are some frames within the building that are normal rectilinear frames and then in addition to that they're braced with triangulated elements. So for example we talked about this building where there's a braced frame on the east wall here with simple diagonal struts to create the, create the triangulation. And likewise we had three braced frames at the center. One, uh, this is the top edge and then here's one, the top edge, and then another that's the top edge. So this frame, for example, consisting of this triangulated uh, bay, um, is the prime resistor for wind force against this, this big face of the building or the opposite big face of the building. Now, in this particular building, all the joints were pin joints. Um, so the only resistance to horizontal forces in the north-south direction is this frame and that frame. Even if we had moments, every, moment joints everywhere in this building though, the overwhelming burden of resisting the horizontal forces would be on these triangulated frames because they are far stiffer than a rigid frame and therefore that would be the stiffest stress path in where the uh, overwhelming majority of the force would occur. Now, one of the points we made was that because this braced frame has a fairly localized bay or base, we ended up having to put in a huge grade beam. The one that, that I'm pointing at at the moment was 14 uh, feet wide, four feet deep, and was chocked full of steel rebar, top and bottom, closely spaced uh, 11 eighths rebar, in other words, one and three eighths inches in diameter. So one of the big costs of uh, triangulated or braced frame structures is in footings that are necessary to redistribute the forces once those frames get to the ground. Moment frames, on the other hand, if we moment framed every uh, connection in this building, would have been uh, pretty efficient and would have involved minimal footings because instead of a, a really narrow base like this base frame does, which then has to be redistributed into the soil, the effective um, footing for a braced, for a truly moment frame system would be the full width of the building. So sometimes even though moment frames are a bit more expensive than to do, to do than pin joints, they do give you more architectural flexibility and potentially much less significant footings. This is just uh, an image to remind you of the importance
of these grade beams for redistributing the load. These grade beams are actually slightly larger than the width of the building. Um, so moment frames across the whole building would have been a more efficient way in the end to do this structure. All right, so let's talk about some structures that are moment framed under wind load against the faces of this building, either this side or that side. Uh, if we have wind against this side, these beams are tending to be pushed in that direction. And it turns out this building is stabilized by moment connections, first below this deck, but also up above here. And so we'll show what one of those looks like. This is the field bolted connection, which is the shear connector. And then we have these weld drip plates, which we put underneath both top and bottom. And then full penetration welds are created to fuse this material with that material. <clears throat> and this whole complex joint here was pre prefabricated with this stub sticking out in a factory environment so that the field connections would be minimal. So this is a, what we call a simple moment frame system in that this beam here is just a wide flange beam. It has a constant depth across the top and a constant cross section. And um, it, it looks very much like any other framed building that we would create, except we've gone to the trouble to create a moment connection here. And by the way, we would have normally had to pay for this plate anyway to make the shear connection for a pin joint so the only added cost are these drip plates and the cost of the field welders to make this joint. Um, well, I shouldn't say that exactly because you'll notice this entire complex joint is fairly crucial to the effectiveness of these field connections. But it's not an absurdly expensive joint and sometimes it's worth it to do this rather than try and find a place to do a braced frame. This is just another view of one of those joints. All right, so here we have a simple two-story building which uh, went up in Cary, North Carolina. Uh, it has some um, braced frame elements, uh, particularly relative to wind load on this large face where the depth of the building in that direction is not very great. So they've trussed those frames, but you'll notice these frames are all moment connected frames. And when you do a close-up, you discover that, again, there's, there's a, uh, a, a web member that grabs hold of the beam. In this case, this is an angle or a double angle that's welded to the beam, and then it's through bolted into the column. But that's to provide the shear force to resist the gravity force there. And then the moment connection is achieved by putting this drip weld plate underneath and doing a full penetration of this flange to this column. And then of course we have the stiffener here that keeps this bottom flange from crushing this thin web in compression. This is one of the end joints. Um, the construction of this interior joint is done in a similar manner. This is another example of a field welded connection. Here we have a plate that is welded in the shop to this column. And then here is a stiffener plate and another plate on the other side. This beam gets rested on top of that. This is the shear connection to the web of that beam. And then this element right here has been welded to the top of the beam. And I'm not quite sure how this was done, but there appears to be a uh, weld drip plate right there. So my theory is that this plate on the top was shop welded to the beam. And the reason I think that is they prefer not to do an upside down weld like this in the field. So I suspect that was done in the shop. And then this uh, drip uh, weld plate was used to create the full penetration weld between this plate and the column. Um, here's another structure. This is the statistics building on the north campus of North Carolina State University. Uh, you'll notice on the bottom floors there's triangulation in every direction. 
There are two reasons for that. One is the shear forces are most intense at the bottom floor and that's a great place to fully triangulate things. The other reason is that there's a retaining wall back here which is very stiff and to keep the building from rotating about that you'd like to have a really stiff braced frame at this end also. So this end could have been a concrete wall but it turns out to you can do this very effectively with this truss frame which is also incredibly stiff. So when we do a close-up of this wall you'll see that we have moment connections here with the web stiffeners on the columns that we're accustomed to seeing. We don't see any of those web stiffeners down here and in fact the top flange of this beam is not really engaging that column. This is a simple clip angle connector um, and the reason we don't bother with a moment connection down here is because we are getting all the benefits we need from this triangulated uh, bracing in this bottom bay so we start our moment connections at the second level up and this is just a close-up of that structure and I might mention that you see here a, 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 a structure that has beams for floor joist you'll recall that we determined that uh, for floor joist uh, trusses tend to be lighter but uh, a nice thing about using beams is that they take shear studs really well because the beam is inherently thick enough to weld them to and when we do that we can use the beam and composite decking uh, action with the deck with the concrete deck where the concrete deck works in compression and that allows us to make the beams substantially shallower because the effective depth of the beam is from the bottom flange of this beam to the top surface of the concrete decking. So if the concrete decking is six inches thick we can reduce the depth of this beam by six inches by the use of those shear studs. So if you want to reduce the floor to floor dimension or have a higher dimension from floor to ceiling to let in daylighting uh, it's often worth it to use beams even though uh, they tend to be heavier um, than, than trusses. All right, this is a concrete structure. This is near the coast, so it has to be able to resist hurricanes. Um, it's a rigid frame structure. So uh, here are some frames that are flying through an atrium space, but they're similar to what's supporting floors. It turned out it was really easy to photograph these. So we have a series of beams that are coming to this round column. And the round column has got to be able to resist moments in every direction, which is why round is a very logical shape for it. Round is also a very gentle shape for a column because it's harder to run into that column and hurt your shoulder like you would on something like a wide flange or even a square column. So they make this column round. Uh, these beams are coming into it, and you'll notice the beams are wider than the column. And the reason they've done that, the more logical thing would be to make these beams deeper and narrower. However, one of the things we have to deal with is if we want to get moment connections in cast-in-place concrete, which, by the way, is very easy to do. It's inherently very uh, well accommodated by that system. But you do have issues of lots of steel reinforcing uh, passing through this joint. And in the end, uh, we, sort of, we tend to think of that steel as slender and able to just fly by each other and not have to make much accommodation. But the reality is that's, that steel rebar is often very thick and some of it has to give way to other steel rebar going through the joint. So one of the ways we deal with this is we make this beam wider and then we have steel down this side of the beam that goes around the column and then on the other side that goes around the column and in essence by making the beams wider we provide a place for the continuous steel to bypass and basically wrap that column in order to create the maximum uh, moment benefit at the column. So here we have another view further up in the building and the beams have gotten a bit lighter but it's the basic same basic notion Here's another view from down below.
and this has a steel frame roof on it by the way so once they get up high enough the loads are light enough that they tend to go with a lighter structure and in this case it was a sloped roof so they used triangle shaped trusses to accommodate um, basically a, a, a roof that peaks in the center and slopes off to each side. Now this is not exactly a building but I like this image because it kind of illustrates the point. Here we have some sturdy wide flange columns, some sturdy wide flange beams that are moment connected in this way. So we have the classic stiffeners there and then along this diagonal we have another stiffener because compression is occurring along that line and to keep the web material from buckling we've welded a stiffener to the side of it. This is just a close-up of that connection. And by the way you see the makings of another moment connection here. And we often push hard for things like that in the case of highway bridges and things like this because we need to keep them shallow otherwise the ramp up to get it to that height is very expensive. Okay, so here we have another rigid frame building, which you've seen before. Here we have some uh, wide flanges with some holes cut in them to sort of lighten everything up. And they are coming and making moment connections to the column. So those moment connections look like this. This web right here is, goes all the way through the column and it's what connects to the webs of the two beams to resist the gravity forces. Um, and it's our ca classic sort of fin or clip angle that grabs hold of the web. From a point of view of the moment, the moment connection is established through these bolted connections here. So in essence, the, the top cord forces, which are in tension at this point, are transferred into this member and then over to the other side and subsequently into the top of that member and likewise the compressive forces in the bottom here are transferred through and meet the compressive forces from this beam. So this is a moment stabilized structure. It's also moment stabilized in the other direction because these peculiar elliptic shaped beams come around and actually engage the columns in a moment connection here also. So in essence this is a continuous frame which has this kind of shape to it and that's the means of resisting lateral forces against this glass wall or against this glass wall. Um, I'm presenting this under the category of simple frames in the sense that their frames of constant depth of the members, although this is right at the edge of not being simple anymore. And the reason is, this is not just some curved beam that people ran through some curving machine. This is actually a flat plate cut with a torch to this shape, and then a bottom flange is welded on this surface, and a top flange is welded on that one. Uh, so this very complex shape has been uh, done in a shop environment. None of these operations are tremendously difficult. I mean, cutting these holes is just a simple torching operation, and cutting this elliptical shape is a simple torching operation. But when you do all of that, plus you have to shape the bottom flange and shape the top flange and somehow clamp it all together in a jig while it's being welded, all of that um, certainly adds to the complexity and cost of this structure. But as a sort of uh, structural diagram, if we put aside the whole issue of the fabrication and the complex and unusual shape. As a simple structural diagram, this is a simple moment frame where we have a member of one cross section here and then this cross section and that cross section are similar and that they do not change over the length of it. So that ends our discussion of simple moment frames for low-rise to mid-rise buildings.